Welcome back guys, Japanime here once again, and it has finally come, we are finally taking a look at the fully combined movie Megazord. I've been very excited for this thing, but first we gotta get through the Sabretooth Tiger. So, for a quick size comparison, here it is with a 5 inch figure, so pretty tall, honestly. I think the tallest of them all. Uh, we can see its gimmick right here in its gun that uh, we have seen on the interactive Megazord. It is arm mounted, it's gonna do the same thing here. Very quickly, here it is with the uh, Ninja Steel Megazord, obviously you know, uh, it's a lot a lot smaller by itself, but considering it's one Zord, it's pretty huge by comparison. Of course, it does come with a minifigure. The cockpit is right here, as you can see, but that is not where the figure is located. The figure is actually located back here, and you can see that it cannot open all the way with this attached. So you can remove it or you can rotate it. It will rotate uh, 360 degrees. Uh, you can just pull it off to whatever you like to do, and you can come back here and grab the Yellow Ranger figure. And we'll just set that right back on. And again, Real quick, we'll just take a look at this because we have a lot to cover in this video, but you can see it's pretty well detailed, pretty well painted. Again, standard articulation, it can sit and she can put her arms up. So, you know, not too exciting, but not terrible either. I appreciate that we got these minifigures. Now, as far as the Sabretooth Tiger itself, we have no head articulation, and we really don't have any leg articulation. We have these big hollow legs that you can see here, and you can't really do anything with them. They'll rotate out to the side for transformation, but that's about it, and these back legs don't do anything at all. They're very statuesque, and they're very uh, hollow. Like, everything about this thing is hollow. That's the thing with these guys. Because of how they transform, and because of these uh, plastic, limbs that have nothing inside of them all of them end up feeling very very hollow which is a little disappointing but then you put this guy all together and you completely get over that because individually basically my, my recommendation for all these zords is don't buy them unless you're going to get the full thing if you're going to go all in and get the full assembled Megazord, go for it. I think you're gonna enjoy it, but if you're only gonna buy one, I don't think it's worth your time and money, because I don't think any of these guys do enough on their own to justify their price points. Uh, but again, together, they are quite a sight, and I'm very happy to have them all. Now, her gimmick is very simply this. It's on this bit right here. In fact, we'll just take it off, but uh, that's her gimmick. You press down, and it's got a little firing gimmick. And I gotta say, I'm very simple-minded. I love that, I think that's awesome. I've been doing this for hours. It's, it's actually kind of sad how much I've been doing this for. But uh, we'll set this off to the side because that's going to definitely be part of the transformation is um, reattaching that later. Come over here, rotate this head down, and click it in place. Just like so. You can hear that click. And then open this up, and there is your waist piece. So now, let's bring in the rest of them and start this transformation. So I hope you guys will be able to hear me okay. Things are going to get a little weird. I'm going to have to shift positions a lot, and I'm probably going to have to get in front of the camera to be able to... Uh, fully assemble this thing. But first things first, we need to bring in all the other pieces from the previous reviews. So, there's the pterodactyl, there's the mastodon, and the triceratops, and last but not least, the T-Rex. So now that we have a gigantic mess, let's try to make heads or tails of this thing. All right, so once again, as you can see, I'm on this side of the camera now, uh, so hopefully this will be uh, a good shot of this guy getting assembled. So, first thing you're gonna wanna do, is come over here to the Sabretooth Tiger. She has these little clips right here uh, on the back of her hind legs. You'll also see these little slots right here on the Mastodon and uh, saber, not saber tooth tiger, uh, Mastodon and Triceratops. You just slide her forward. There's no satisfying click, as you can see and hear right here. You just slide it in. I hope that's well on camera. Just like so. There's, again, no click. You can shake these loose. If you really try, you can actually slide them right off. The legs are pretty bare bones basic. They don't really do a whole lot as far as motion goes, which is a shame because this guy's got some pretty decent arms for a Megazord. Okay, guys, so now that we've raised up the camera a bit, we can attach the T-Rex. Now, he might not attach exactly the way you'd be expecting him to. I would have thought there'd be a plug right here, or a peg or something that goes into that little peg in there where the head was once housed. Actually, these tabs right here on the side are going to go into these holes on top of the Sabretooth Tiger. I'm not sure how well you can see that. Again, I'm at a very awkward angle, so I do apologize. I'm going to try to do my best to get the best shots possible. But you just slide him on, and this is all very loose, and again, you just slot this up and peg it into place, and again, slide this up and peg it into place, very simple. All right, so he's still pretty well in frame. Next, what you wanna do is come over to the wings, and you want to take uh, the pieces from the T-Rex, which were his arms, and you wanna attach them to the back side. So again, you want it going with the wing. They will slide right into place on that little peg. So there's one, and then we come over here to the second one again, looking at it from the underside, taking the T-Rex piece, hole, 
peg. Pretty simple, you guys are smart, you get the idea. Slot it into place. Now, you'll notice that on the pterodactyl, there's a little tab right here on both sides sticking out. You want to plug that into the back of the T-Rex. You might be able to see from there, maybe you can't, but there's a little hole right here and a little hole right here next to this little black peg where he used to have his uh, leg plugged in. And you can take this and you can slot it right into his back. And like I said, you're basically assembling the Megazord without, I mean, you can assemble it is what I meant to say, excuse me. You can assemble it without the pterodactyl because she's literally only wings. Even though the head is very, whoops, I pulled the head off. The head is very deceiving. It looks like it came from the uh, pterodactyl, but again, if you've seen all the reviews, uh, you know that it did not. So, so we're basically done with the assembly of the Megazord. All we have left is this piece, this piece, and then the two guns right here. Now the guns are gonna become arm mounted. They don't have to be, uh, but that is what the instructions say. To get him to hold everything basically, uh, it's best that you arm mount them just like so. Then you have the T-Rex tail, which will slide on right here according to the instructions. And then you have the pterodactyl everything but the wings. Basically it's a clipped wing pterodactyl. We'll go into that hand as like a second sword. Uh, and that is how you get all the pieces on him. Obviously you can take this arm stuff off to make him look a little bit cleaner and a little bit sleeker, which I will do uh, to make this review a little bit easier going forward. But you can see him fully assembled right here. This thing is massive. And I'm gonna zoom in really quick. I'm back behind the camera. We're gonna zoom in really quick and try our best to get some nice shots of this guy. I'll go in a little bit later with the camera at the very end and do some close-up shots. Uh, but you guys can see how he looks assembled. And I don't think he looks that bad. He's got a few proportion issues here and there. He's got a, a shocking uh, hourglass figure. He's very thin in the waist. I would have liked to have seen that beefed up somehow, maybe with uh, the legs back here that are, uh, you can see if we flip him, and my display station's falling over. If we flip him to the back, if we flip him to the back, you can see all the extra bits and whatnot. He's pretty clean for the most part. Um, again, looking at him from the side view, you can see there's not that much kibble. Uh, so I, I do have to applaud them for that, but these little feet down here, these, um, these uh, saber tooth tiger feet, I think they could have maybe rotated in such a way or added something to give him a little bit of a uh, fuller waist so it doesn't feel as scrawny. And you can see he lost his tail sword. Again, guys, I apologize. This is probably one of the biggest thing, if not the biggest thing I've ever reviewed. So it's very hard to keep in frame. So again, I do apologize. Again, I already said this, the head is a little bit disproportionately small and the wings are definitely tiny, especially if you look at the interactive Megazord, which we will in a little bit. The wings are very, very tiny uh, by comparison to that one so uh, there is that and I feel like these guns just look way too big on him again using the interactive Megazord as an example um, they're just way too big on him now his arms retain all the same articulation they had before so you do have this 360 uh, and you do have this nice bend in the arm I hope my elbow's not uh, in the camera frame again I apologize I'm off to the side he still has a head swivel uh, just like that and he has a decent again a decent range of motion for a Megazord but the legs can't do much of anything I wish they could articulate in some way shape or form but they're basically they, they just plug in and they stay in and again Megazords are usually brick so I can't really complain all that much that he's so brickish especially because the arm articulation is very solid especially excuse me by uh, Megazord standards so there is that, but I would have liked a little bit more in the leg just for how expensive this guy is, but you really do get your money's worth more so in size and just sheer plastic than anything else. So we'll kind of bring him to the side and let's do some size comparisons. Even if you don't own one, you've definitely seen it in stores. Here he is with a standard Megazord, so not even coming up to uh, the top of his legs, basically coming up to his knees uh, at best, the standard Megazord. So this thing is absolutely not going to cut it size-wise comparatively. Moving up a level, here he is with the interactive Megazord, which definitely gets a lot closer. And uh, again, I apologize, these are definitely hanging off my review station. But uh, you can see he gets a lot closer, actually coming up to about the chest, basically up to where the pterodactyl, or excuse me, um, T-Rex uh, begins is where the head comes up to. So not bad. And again, you can see what I'm talking about with the wings, just how tiny these wings are compared to the giant size uh, that these guys have. Again, just comparative to the body. I mean, these are nice, full wings that fit the size of this Megazord. These are not, you know, as 
fitting. I don't think they're bad, but they're not as big. And I wish again, maybe we reworked how the plastic of the centerpiece goes to make the wings a little bit bigger. Again, it's hard to really complain because I don't know what the actual movie one is going to be like. Um, so I don't know if this is, you know, maybe Lionsgate's fault for the design or if this is something to nitpick on Bandai's part. It's very hard to judge without having seen the movie. Last but not least, guys, for the size comparisons, here he is with the Imaginex Megazord. And uh, this is the only thing that towers over him, and not even by that much. You can see my TV in the background. Um, but you can see right here, it's just bigger than him by a little bit. And if we even go from the very top here, these horns, to the tip of these wings, it's even just by a small, small margin that this guy is smaller. So this is his only rival size-wise in the entire Power Ranger line. And certainly, there's nothing that transforms that even gets close to the size of this movie Megazord here. Anyways, guys, I know people have been hating on the look of the movie Megazord. But if you do dig the look of the movie Megazord, you're gonna want to pick this up. This is impressive in sheer size alone. The articulation is even, at least in the arms, uh, is a lot better than, again, standard Megazord. Sure, he has some proportion issues here and there, but again, ultimately, this is a great thing to have just for its size alone. It's impressive in its size for your collection. It's the biggest transforming Megazord we've ever gotten. It's almost the biggest Megazord, period, if the Imagine X one uh, was not made or was made a little bit smaller. But again, this is just impressive as far as the entire size of it goes. Altogether, I believe this this guy ends up costing about $110, $120 uh, because the individual Zords are 20 bucks and then the T-Rex is 30 to 40. I, I forget exactly um, where he is. So again, 110 to 120. I do think he's worth his price point. I really, really do. I do like how big this guy is. He's got some solid articulation, solid detail. But again, it's all determined uh, by if you like the look of the movie Zords and Megazord. If you don't like that look, then you're already out on this purchase. I can tell you that because this guy really, I don't see him winning you over. Sure, the size is really nice and the fact that it can be the size and transform is really cool but again if you don't like the look of this stuff individually you're not really going to be sold when it's all put together uh, in fairness but I like the look of the movie so far everything looks pretty neat to me I do like the Megazord and the transforming one is definitely the way to go for collectors I think it's better than the interactive one which in fairness is probably going to end up being more movie accurate to the actual model that we see but I think as far as a toy goes it's more geared towards children um, I think children will get a bigger kick out of this I think people who like transforming transforming and combining robot toys are going to get a huge kick out of this guy. So again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Do you like this guy? Do you want this guy? Do you think he's worth the money or do you think he's a piece of crap? Because I know, again, a lot of people are hating on the look of the movie. Whatever your opinions are, positive or negative, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. I am very curious to see what people think. Have you picked him up again or do you want to pick him up? Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, guys, if you enjoyed. I got plenty more great videos coming your way. Again, I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys soon with another video.